What's up guys, welcome back to the F100 build. In the last episode, you saw us drop the uh, Ford 8.8 .8 into the truck. Now we're gonna knock out all the finishing touches so we can get this thing on the road. All right guys, just got back to the parts store. Got most of the stuff we're gonna need to get this thing back on the road, so talk over what we actually need to do. All right, and to catch you up from the last episode, like I said, the 8.8 .8 is in the truck. I pretty much got everything hooked up. I've got some uh, finishing touches to do. I started working on the brakes, got everything uh, going. I started to bleed them, and the bleed uh, the bleeder broke off in the caliper on this side, and then an extractor got broke off in the bleeder, stuck in the caliper. So got a new caliper to drop in on this side. This side's perfectly fine, thankfully, so I'm gonna leave that one alone for now. And uh, then I could get the brakes bled so we can stop. Then, as you can see, got the drive shaft back. That needed to be shortened four and a half inches. And like I said, I'm using the Crown Victoria rear uh, drive shaft. I did make a mistake, and the slip yoke that is on the front of this will not fit in the T5 transmission. It is a 28 spline. And so the, uh, out, uh, the slip yoke will fit onto the output shaft of the transmission. I tested that on the bench beforehand, but the outside diameter of that slip yoke is too large for the uh, rear housing, the output shaft housing, and the, uh, the bushing that fits in there. So that's a big bummer, not a huge deal because I have the original for drive shaft and that yoke will work. The only thing is, that is a 1310 yoke, whereas the Crown Vic is a 1350. A little bit heavier duty, but with this truck, I'm not super worried about it. So I think the uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this diff cover off, seal it up so I can get that going. Um, so tomorrow I can fill that up, and then I'm gonna start working on the drive shaft. diff covers off and I've already pulled this off before just to check everything looks pretty good in there so I'm gonna clean up mating surfaces uh, hit everything with some brake clean and go ahead and put some black RTV on here and slap it back together that way it can be drying before I actually put some uh, some gear oil in there so I think I've used this stuff before uh, it's fine it's oil um, but the kicker is I will be using some Posi track, um, pretty much just for the LSD, so that that can bite hard. Hopefully, this LSD is still good. This rear end, who knows how many miles are on it, but hopefully nobody was doing too many burnouts. So, fingers crossed, we can. All right, guys. So I got the uh, new U joint installed. This went pretty well and kind of a pain at the same time. The uh, U joint is easy to get out of this uh, cast iron but it was a real pain to get it out of this aluminum. I had to take it down and put it on the uh, 20 ton press and it let go all at once. So it would just pop and explode. And I really hate doing that with the press, but got this swapped on. I got the uh, new brake caliper on. I got the brakes bled. Um, pretty much good enough to drive on, but not, you know, put it on the street, essentially. I can just go drive it around the yard and stuff. So have to go through the entire brake system afterwards but I tried slipping in this uh, new slip joint and it does not go into the transmissions in the truck it fits in my spare t5 um, pretty well but it does not fit in the one in the truck so I'm gonna try to sand down this edge and see if maybe just this uh, lip is a little too much and it's catching on it or something so Gonna give that a go and um, see if we can get this in there and get it installed tonight because I would love to see this in and the truck on the ground because I'm not sure how much clearance I'm gonna have between that cross member and uh, the body, this other cross member. So may have to raise the rear end up because I don't know if I feel like modifying these rear cross members, but fingers crossed it'll work. Okay guys, it is now the end of the next night. 
So it's been tonight um, just knocking stuff out. It's been pouring rain outside, so it's been loud in the garage. Finally stopped, but I have a five speed in the F100. So went ahead, chopped a hole. I had to cut and weld this to get it away from the seat to go into uh, second and fourth, but it, it works pretty good. Um, it's a little bit higher than I want it to be, but I don't know if I want it to be any lower. So that's definitely going to be something I can change up while I'm, you know, on the road driving and everything. Other things I got done, let's see here. I went ahead, filled the diff up with uh, oil as well as some additive for the uh, limited slip. And then the other main thing I did was made some clearance for the drive shaft. So went ahead and took a plasma cutter and cut that out. And that is a piece of the original drive shaft that I cut and I'm gonna weld in there. Not gonna weld it tonight. I uh, went ahead and just plasma cut it. Figured that was the easiest thing to do. And I think that's about it. <laughs> it was a pretty solid night. Definitely got some stuff done. I wanna try to clean up this front one a little bit more. The um, bracket there is for the e-brake and I wanna try to retain that where it is. So I think that's pretty much as good as I'm gonna get. But this is right height as it sits right now and I think I'm happy with this. I don't think I'm going to have any issues with the drive shaft hitting and um, it's going to move less further back than it will uh, or further forward than it will further back since the transmission's fixed and the axles that's going to be moving up and down. So I think that's plenty of clearance. I should be able to haul and do everything I want to do with this truck which is perfect. All right guys, well, I got the truck moving. Um, as you can see from this clip, we did get the tires moving and everything. I was able to shift through all the gears with it sitting on the jack stands. Everything seemed pretty good, other than the fact that I did not have the microphone on and I talked for a couple minutes and you didn't hear any of it. So, reiterating what I said last night, got everything in there, shifted through the gears really well, brakes worked, everything seemed pretty good. I put it down on the ground and the, it grinded when I put it in gear, but simple issue, the clutch isn't fully disengaging, so I tightened that up. Turns out all the bushings in the uh, clutch Z-bar are completely missing, so the adjuster is pretty much maxed out. I pushed it a little bit further. Um, should be good enough to drive, but uh, yeah, I need to go through and replace all the bushings. The other issues are we're leaking out of the output seal um, which I tried to get away with not replacing. Obviously that didn't work. And I'm also leaking out of the speedo sensor. So this transmission has an electronic speed um, sensor and it kind of broke when I pulled it out. So I'm gonna see if I can pull it back out and um, use some RTV or something to seal it back up. But uh, we'll see. So get those things knocked out and a handful of other stuff. And hopefully we're gonna drive this thing today. So keep your fingers crossed. Okay, and here's one part of the leak. This was dripping out, so this is the speed sensor, just I think a Hall effect sensor. And so this cap sits over the sensor, but as you can see, it broke off. I really don't feel like buying another one because I don't need um, this, it's not gonna work. But what I didn't realize is that there is a hole in the tip. There is an O-ring that seals around the edge. It seals really well, but obviously fluid's still gonna be able to get to the tip. So I'm gonna fill this up with some silicone and apply it back in there and get it back in the transmission. And that should be fine. It was just dripping. It wasn't uh, you know, a really big leak, but that should be a quick fix for this one.
right guys, here we go. Let's see if I can shoot this one handed. Years, no grinding. Let's see how she does. So far, so good. Brakes work. Pretty good. Feels pretty good. So I think the next step is I'm going to wash the truck and I'm also going to wash this. It's been sitting here in the garage leaking and uh, I've been painting in here, you can see. So whenever I paint the rear half of the frame, I wet the entire floor so the paint wouldn't, the overspray wouldn't stick to it. Of course it runs, so I've got all this stuff that needs to be scrubbed off. Hopefully that comes up. Um, it's actually pretty bad right here. But ATF, gear oil, you know, plenty of dust and dirt, so I really need to clean out the garage get it sparkling, but I'm going to wash that first, get all the dust off of it. Well, thank you guys for sticking around for this part of the video. I really do appreciate it. Getting this truck back on the road has been a huge accomplishment, so thank you guys for sticking around the whole time. Again, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and if you have the opportunity, check out the website, petrol360.co. We'll see you guys next time.